a conversation with Shelley Millerson, teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing with Fauquier County Schools. That's our conversation today on Ask the Hearing Doctors. Hi, I'm Jim Cuddy, and this is Ask the Hearing Doctors, and I'm joined today by Dr. Anna Anzola, Doctor of Audiology with Hearing Doctors, the Washington, D.C. area's highest rated audiology practice with over 1,500 five-star reviews. Also joining us today, Shelley Millerson, teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing with Fauquier County Schools. Anna, Shelley, great to see you both. Thank you, too. Shelley, why don't we start off, if you could tell us a little bit about your background and, and your ascent to where you are today as, as teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing. Sure, this is the to start my 28th year of being a special education teacher. I have an undergraduate and a master's degree in special education. I also have additional endorsements to teach children with intellectual disabilities, emotional disabilities, early childhood special education, um, learning disabilities, and deaf education. So that has been really helpful in all of my years of experience working with lots of different children with different um, needs. And um, I'm currently the only teacher of the deaf in Faulkner County Public Schools. And what kind of caseload do you manage in the school system? A big one. <laughs> I, um, I have close to 30 students in 17 out of the 21 schools in the county. Wow. And I understand you even have some students that come and see Dr. Ann. I do. I do. We have a set of sisters that come and see Dr. Ann. And uh, tell us about that experience of working with, with Shelley and, and, and Fauquier County Schools. You know, it's so great. It's one of my favorite days when you bring me all the kids, um, because I never get to see the teachers. So and when, once we fit the kids with um, hearing aids, I never get to hear the after what happens. So she can keep me up to date as to what's happening. And then um, it makes the management of the hearing loss a little easier. How are most children identified with hearing loss? You want me to speak to that? Yes. Sure. Um, in the educational setting, um, all the children are have a newborn screening and if they don't pass that then there's a series of events that happens after that when the children become um, two I can start working with children who are two in Faulkner County um, and a lot of times they'll go to the pediatrician for their checkup and if the pediatrician is noticing that they have some hearing loss then they'll refer them to an ENT and an audiologist sometimes the parents have concerns and they will reach out to the school system to start the referral process because they're, they have concerns in communication or speech and language. And we will do a screening. And if the child doesn't pass the screening, we rescreen within two weeks. And if the child still doesn't pass, then we will um, have, ask the family to take them to the ENT or the audiologist for further testing. Um, sometimes the teachers will actually um, voice concerns, um, academic concerns, or the children are not paying attention, or they don't seem to be following the directions or knowing what's going on in the classroom. Um, and sometimes the, the nurses have to do hearing screenings at certain ages um, of public school children. And if they don't pass those screenings, then they alert me um, uh, at my request. Um, so then I can follow up with the nurse in two weeks to see if that child still doesn't pass the hearing screening, that I get in touch with the parents and we go forward. Do you make a point of reaching out to all the teachers, say ahead of a school, a new school year, and just saying, hey, look, if you happen to notice any of these types of, of warning signs, please let me know because it may be something more than, than what you think it is. Um, and, I, and especially when we went from in-person to virtual, I sent out, I made a PowerPoint of kind of do's and don'ts and things to look for for children with hearing loss and just kind of good keep teaching practices especially when we're going to this virtual model that really none of us have ever taught before. And that was really helpful and I got good feedback to say, oh, I never considered that and I didn't know about that. So that um, was very helpful for that kind of professional development for all staff members, whether it's your PE teacher, the music teacher, a general education teacher, the counselor, who you know anybody who comes in contact with a student, it was really helpful. I do ongoing um, professional development for the, the school system um, as needed, um, like sign language, um, little professional development section and you know sessions to, so they can learn some basic sign language to work with kids with hearing loss and for behavior management things like that we've talked on this program plenty of times about how hearing loss impacts everybody sure. how in, in every area of development how and when do you see these or what areas do you see most affected for children as they're, as they're coming up through the years with the really young kids, really it's the, the area of communication and speech and language development. Um, some children are just not developing communication and speech and language skills. And so we need to find out why that is. 
Is it a praxia? Is, it, uh, is there a hearing loss? Is there something else going on? Is there another medical diagnosis? Is there a genetic component? And so we really have to look really closely and say, why are those children not developing those skills? Because language and literacy impacts everything. Everything we do in the world has to do with language and literacy. So if those skills aren't there, they're going to struggle in all other areas um, of their life, essentially. And so we really look for those skills and also academic. They have difficulty with academic skills because if you are not hearing the auditory information given to you and the directions and the instruction, then you're not going to be able to apply that. And that's going to be very challenging in the academic realm for kids too. And when you notice a situation where a, a a child, there's something going on with the child mm -hmm. that's obvious. They're missing something. Mm -hmm. Does it start by going to see Dr. Anna, an audiologist, or do you have to start with a, a medical doctor? How does the process work with children? Yeah, usually they go to the ENT, mm -hmm. and then they come to us, mm -hmm. and then we can make uh, referrals as to for a medical clearance before they even get fitted with um, amplification. Mm -hmm. So the e so it starts for children. It starts with an ENT versus say an adult, where I can just come into an audiologist and make an appointment. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And even with younger kids, it probably starts with the pediatrician, oh, like yeah. with their annual checkups, or if they're if they're having a lot of ear infections, ear infections. or if they have um, wax or buildup, or they're just the parents are like they're really not responding to me. I'm I'm calling their name and they're not turning around. <laughs> Usually they go to the pediatrician first, and then the pediatrician will do a hearing test or hearing screening, and then it will go to the ENT, and then we come to Doctor Anna. Gotcha. The eligibility process in the school system, what's it like for accessing support services in schools? Well, well there, for, um, at least for Fauquier County, there's a process that we go through and the child has to be screened first, um, that hearing screening that I, I spoke about before. Um, and if they don't have that, they don't pass that screening and then they have to go to the audiologist and they have an audiological exam and that shows that there is a hearing loss then there's certain criteria that we have to go through as an eligibility team, which the parents are part of that team. And we go through all of the criteria to see, is there an educational impact? Or are there deficits in communication? And then do they need specially designed instruction? And then um, what type of hearing loss? That's one of the first questions, what type of hearing loss and the severity of it. And so I take all of that information that I get from the audiologist and I put it in that form and then discuss with the team how that hearing loss is going to impact the child social emotionally, academically, communication skills, um, um, and in every act, you know, even like social skills with students, even psychologically, like how, you know, these, these children need to have help and need to have intervention. So that's an eligibility process we go through. Then if the child is found eligible for services as a student with a hearing impairment, then an IEP, you know, individualized education plan is developed. And then that's where I, I come in and I provide services for them. Now, when children are identified with, with hearing loss and they, and they get fitted with hearing aids, mm -hmm. they've, they've come and they've seen you, does the support system continue, and how important is that for it to continue, especially with children? Oh, yeah, vital. It's vital. Yeah, it's, it's very pivotal. So they come in, we um, manage their hearing loss, we make changes, we evaluate, you know, where they may be today compared to that to they were, the, you know, whatever the last Even audiological, a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, audiological evaluation, whether it's a few months ago, a few weeks ago, or six months ago. Um, make changes, interventions, maybe mm -hmm. the ENT needs to be pulled in again. And it's so nice to have this connection. Um, I never get to see the actual teacher <laughs> come in to I see us. I do love it time. too. And we have, it's such a great team and I feel like, you know, she trusts my efforts and, the, and vice versa. And it just makes it a very complete team so that, you know, the recommendations will be followed through. Mm -hmm. And I can share what's happening in the school like what kind of setting the child is in. Are they in a special program with a lower student teacher ratio? Or are they in general education classes all the time? And then the student comes and they can say, well, when I go to the gym, it's a little echoey. Or I have a harder time in music because everything's so loud. Or when I'm, when I'm working by myself, it's fine. But then when people start moving their chairs and there's background noise, I have a harder time hearing. That's vital information that we share with Dr. Yes. Anna. And then she can adjust accordingly. And so they're getting maximum 
um, support in, out of their um, right. amplification devices to be successful in school. Right. I'm not suggesting that every teacher has the time to bring in their kids, but it no. just makes it I so it. nice <laughs> for us because I get tiny bits of information that are so critical for the success of the kiddos. Yeah, because you're not in the school, I'm not and I'm school. not here every day, and the kids so cannot we tell me. Right. Yeah. And the kids cannot tell me exactly what's been going on at the gym, at the cafeteria, mm -hmm. you know, in the classroom, and it's just it makes it so it's very nice for teachers. It underscores the importance of a multifaceted support system. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And it made me think as you were talking about background noises and things. When you're in school, especially at the high school level, well, even the, the, the middle school level, there are band practices or, or you're going to games and they're, you know, you're in, a, in the arena or you're even mm -hmm. out at the football stadium or soccer mm -hmm. field, whatever it is, dances, mm -hmm. things like that, that, that we all kind of take for granted as kids that we're sure. all going to do that, but mm -hmm. somebody that has hearing issues, it's, it's a completely different situation. That's something where you can help them Absolutely. Based Absolutely. on the types of type, whatever Absolutely. it is. I mean, even even I have some students that have cochlear implants and they play sports, and so they need certain types of helmets. And you know, they, the coaches need to know that you have to look at them to give them directions instead of just everybody getting in a huddle and you're talking above them and giving directions or this is the play we're going to do. You need to really have that eye contact and their attention so they absolutely are hearing what you're saying to them. And then they go off and they're just part of the team like everybody else. So some of those accommodations to work with them, the coaches and the families to share with, with the coaches what they need too. So it really is a comprehensive team between the audiologist, the teacher, the parent, the student, the, and then the additional school staff, because everybody's working to maximize their potential. Now, I know that you often go on audiology appointments with, mm -hmm. with your students. I do. And, and, and so that's when you come in and you get to see Dr. I Anna. I do, it's so exciting. Then, it is. But you can't always be there, right? You can't always be in every place. So what advice do you give to, to maybe the parents and the kids, you know, on a day-to-day basis where they might be struggling with what how do they stay focused and, and, and kind of stay on that right path that you help guide them on? I really try to be very um, integral in the process with the parents. Um, even if I don't go to the audiological appointment, I always ask the parents to share the report with me and then I will meet with the parents either in person or via Zoom or Google Meet and I'll go over what those results mean more in layman's terms because there's a lot of medical terms and information and a lot of times the parents don't understand what that means so i'll say this this means he's hearing this and he's not hearing this and they and they're not saying their s sounds well that's because they can't hear that sound based on the audiogram so um that's been really really helpful and then with the students i say to them you know i'm not here every day so you you've kind of got to find your people find, find your person so, so i i show the kids you know who their resources are in the school between the counselor the nurse and the assistant principal their favorite teacher a homeroom teacher because i'm not always going to be there i wish i was there every day i just can't be being that i'm the only one in a lot of different places so i say to them find somebody that you're really comfortable with that you could go to to, to charge your device if you need to to answer a question if you don't understand something maybe you need a quiet room to retake a test find your person and then a lot of times they're in a, the same school elementary until fifth grade and then sixth seventh and eighth for middle school so there's three years and then four years of a high school so a lot of times they can find that person hold on to that person for several years what's nice about my job is i work with kids from age 2 to 22 and so i will follow them all the way through so that we will have a long-standing relationship and so they learn to trust me but my job is to help them advocate for themselves what how do they learn best what do they need in the school system if i'm not there and how do i go about getting that how do i get my needs met when i'm not there every day okay. and then they're able to better deal with it on their own and okay. go off on well them. and because they're going to graduate and go to college or four-year or vocational or the workforce or whatever and they're still going to have hearing loss and so they need to learn to advocate for themselves and what do they need to be successful Shelly, it's wonderful work you're doing. Thank I wish you. Every, I really yeah. enjoy it, and I love coming to see you. Thank you. And I wish every school system had a Shelly Miller. Right. Oh, thank you so I much. Do. I thank really you. enjoy it. Anna, thank you. Thank you so much. If you're in the Washington metropolitan area and you'd like to schedule an appointment with hearing doctors, click the link in the description or visit hearingdoctors.com.